chaotic weather day where we have severe weather in the midwest southern plains and ohio but we also have stuff viewing in the atlantic good morning i'm meteorologist pew today of september 22nd 2025 so starting with severe weather we have three slight risk areas or a two out of five and for the midwest and southern plains specifically we have a two percent risk to see an isolated tornado but in addition to that we also have some places that have a 15 percent chance to see large hail but in all these areas include ohio we do have a 15 percent chance to see winds greater than 60 miles per hour now before we get into the time frames i want to talk about the atlantic really quick because we have a lot of stuff going on so we have Hurricane Gabrielle, which we haven't really talked about her because she's not going to disturb anyone, but she is a Category 3 with 120 miles per hour wind speeds. There is a tropical disturbance forming right behind her that will probably turn into a tropical storm soon, but that's going to also drift eastward as well. But the thing that is concerning is this new development where there's a 10% chance of something forming in the next 48 hours and a 40% chance of something forming in the next 7 days. If something does develop and it forms around this area, while it may still drift eastward, there's a much likely chance that it may hit places like North Carolina. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on for the next week. Okay, now back inland and talking about the time frames. Starting with the Midwest, it looks like storms are going to pop out around 1 p.m. Central Time. Now for the Eastern Rockies and places all the way from Montana to New Mexico, it looks like things are going to start popping up around 3 to 4 p.m. Mountain Time. And for a lot of storms, especially in places like Colorado headed into the Central Plains, may sustain itself where places like Kansas and Oklahoma may see something around 7 p.m. Central Time. So on top of the severe weather risk, we also have a slight risk for flash flooding, especially in places like Kansas. And for the Ohio Valley, places like Indiana, Kentucky, or already seen remnants of last night's storms and this is going to continue pursuing eastward and once it hits Ohio around 3 p.m. eastern time things are going to start intensifying and we may see those isolated wind threats. So why this is all happening if we look at 500 millibars of midway the troposphere kind of like what happened yesterday we have a lot of shortwave troughs. We have one in the midwest Ohio valley but we also have a ridge forming in the south but also still that shortwave trough that's in the northern Rockies. So yesterday both the pacific northwest and southern california area have both seen a low pressure system that brought in a lot of mid-level moisture and those two are going to combine into the eastern Rockies. So throughout this week we've seen a lot of moisture being evacuated in the southern plains and so with the mid-level moisture and we're going downslope from the mountains that's going to bring more drier air into the moist area creating this dry line which is going to cause this surface lifts. And that's going to help with the upper motion to produce these thunderstorms but also in addition to that because we have shortwave troughs that's always associated with decent shear and vorticity so it's going to help tilt those updrafts and spin those updrafts. And so now looking at the surface with this dry line and forming these initial thunderstorms they're going to create a lot of precipitation and cooler air which which eventually will turn into a cold front. And now for the Midwest, we do have a stationary front and that's helping producing those consistent surface lifts. Now for the Ohio Valley, we had that high pressure that was in the south, but now has moved to the southeast. And with that, we have clockwise flow. And so it's bringing in a lot of southwesterly winds into this area, bringing in a lot of warm, moist air. And because we have a lot of convection in Indiana, Kentucky, bringing a lot of precipitation and cool air, parallel to that with that warm, moist air, it is kind of creating its own stationary front as well. And that's why we have a